yeah, early in the morning, he spotted a Tasmanian tiger out this way. So I switched off my engine to my Land Cruiser and got into my sleeping bag. This was at 2 a.m. I woke up and grabbed my spotlight, opened the window, put my arm and shone the torch around, and the light came to rest on what was a thylacine. So we're currently in the midst of a four day, 40 kilometer hike, searching for the last remaining thylacines here in Tasmania. After setting up our trail cameras on day one, we realized that we need to keep going because there wasn't too much game for these tigers to hunt in this area. And after one of the biggest days hiking of my life, both physically and mentally, we made it out to the East Coast, a place filled with animal tracks, some of which looking promising. But before we get back to the expedition, I I want to tell you the main reason why I believe Tasmanian tigers could still exist to this day. So sadly, animals go extinct all the time all over the world for different reasons, mainly from humans. But the thing about us declaring a species extinct is we never know for sure. Like the Tasmanian tiger, they say the last one died in 1936, but it's pretty much impossible. And anyone who actually knows animals and has looked into this Tasmanian tiger case knows that Benjamin wasn't the last one out there in the wild. Some other species that have gone extinct and were rediscovered, the mahogany glider, extinct in 1886, rediscovered over 100 years later in 1989. And how crazy is this next one? The Bermuda petrel, it was extinct in 1620, and rediscovered in 1951. And the case that has intrigued me the most after looking into what animals have been rediscovered is the Zanzibar leopard, because this is a leopard that went extinct in 1990 and was rediscovered 28 years later in Zanzibar. Now Zanzibar is 40 times smaller than Tasmania and has a population of a million more people. 1.5 million people live in Zanzibar. About 500,000 live here in Tasmania. So species like the dodo bird, there's no sightings of that anymore. But till this day, out here in Tasmania, in Papua New Guinea, and even in Cape York, people are seeing what they believe to be a thylacine. And I think that's what sparks my interest in this case, because, you know, people who worked in the government saying that they actually saw Tasmanian tigers and searchers funded by the government going out and looking for them. So we're just heading out to a pretty interesting place right now. So where we're headed is actually the last credible report for a Tasmanian tiger that I've heard of anyway. It was in 1982. Hans Narding actually was camping here one night and saw one. We're just coming up to the exact place that he saw it. So we'll get out and have a look. So it was exactly here on a rainy night in 1982 that was the last credible report for a thylacine, a Tasmanian tiger. And what happened was Hans Narding was actually doing a survey out in this area and it was late at night so he decided to pull up and camp in this exact spot. And yeah, early in the morning uh, he spotted a Tasmanian tiger out this way, which is just so crazy to think because after that point There was funded searches done for the next two years led by Nick Mooney And although they never found anything supposedly from those searches his story stays the same until this day So he actually said so I switched off my engine to my Land Cruiser and got into my sleeping bag This was at 2 a.m. I woke up and grabbed my spotlight opened the window put my arm and shut on the torch around and the light came to rest on what was a thylacine. Now this is someone who has worked in Tasmania his whole life and knows all the animals that were here. I realized immediately what it was. Its drop jaw was a dead giveaway. It turned its head. I could see yellow light reflecting in its eye and it just stood there in front of the vehicle about five yards away. I held the spotlight while the water ran down my arm into the sleeping bag. He was a healthy male, at least four or five years old. My scientific mind 
said, I'd better register what I see. I weighed him, I measured him, I counted his stripes. There was 12 on a sandy coat. And two things stood out, his stripes and the massive butt of his tail. Yeah, it's pretty crazy being in this exact place because if that story is true, it means that thylacines survived an extra 50 years out in the wild, away from people. Now the plan is we're gonna set up camp in this exact place that Hans Narding did in 1982 and see what's lurking around after dark. But what we're gonna do first, before the sun goes down, go for a bit of a drive and survey this landscape. From what I've heard and what I know about Tasmanian devils, which were sort of similar to the thylacines, is they use these roads that we've made as kind of highways for them because it's easier to travel than straight through the bush. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's tigers still out here, they would be using these roads and tracks that we've made as easier highways to walk on. Wow. All right, morning number two, and we've woken up at such an insane place, eh? Look at that. Look at where we camped, so cool. And the camera traps are just down along here. I've actually got pretty high hopes for these camera traps as well because there were prints everywhere. All right, we'll check what we got on the trail camera. Hopefully a thylacine. It went off a few times last night actually. Look at that, Tassie devil on the trail camera. That is so cool. So that's an endangered species that's endemic to Tasmania. Now Tasmanian devils are scavengers. Often what will happen is they'll actually use the roads as kind of food highways because they know a lot of animals get hit. So they'll run up and down the roads at night looking for roadkill to eat. They've even been known to sleep in the carcasses of roadkill. They can consume 40% of their own body weight in one sitting. And in the 90s, it was discovered that there was a facial tumor disease that went through and wiped out, I think it was about 70% of the devil population. Which is so sad, but it's looking all right. It's looking like the population is bouncing back, which is pretty wild because when all that was happening, they had to set up an insurance population in case they went extinct. So that's up on the mainland. What was that? You can see something take off in the distance behind the bush over there. It's hard to see on such a little screen, but I feel like it's moving like a rodent. It's not really moving like any other animals around here. So maybe it could be a Rakali, which is some sort of freshwater rat that lives around water sources. And it makes sense because there's a stream leading into the ocean right here that's fresh water. That is so cool. That's why I love trail cameras. All right, let's go check the other one. So I was just walking up this river doing a bit of exploring this morning to see what animals are in this area because no one comes out here. And I look up the river and spot a little Tasmanian devil sitting on the rocks. Now it's just a young one, so we know that they're breeding, but the funny thing about when these devils are born, the mother devils can actually give birth to about 20 to 30 babies that are the size of jelly beans. However, the mother only has four teeth, so it's pretty much a race to see who survives. Only four devils will win that battle. And the rest of them, well, the mothers have been known to eat them. Nature is pretty crazy.
got the ocean right in front of us and this right here is what we've been drinking out of the whole time a little freshwater stream so good it's filtered through all the sand and everything as well when you're doing two three or four day hikes you can't bring enough water for the whole trip so what we've been doing is we've been looking where the streams are on maps filling up our water bottles and then having to travel in between them fill up our water bottles beforehand i think we got another few k's before we find a place that we're going to set up camp tonight set those trail cameras up again but yeah pretty good if there was thylacines anywhere it'd be somewhere along the west coast the southwest is where i based my missions last time where i actually went out on foot trying to find one. I'll roll you some clips from that trip. So we're going to check this trail camera that we set up last night to see if we got anything on it. Six videos. So this trail camera went off six times throughout the night. Something went in front of it. Number one. What is that? Look at its tail. It's literally straight like the Tassie Tigers were. Come back into shot. It could be a quoll, but that's pretty cool. The first thing on the camera. And yeah, there we go. It's a quoll just cruising around in front of the camera. That's still so cool to get one of these guys on camera out here in the wild. It would have been the biggest fluke ever if the first thing I got on the game camera was a Tassie Tiger. We got some more videos of the quoll just wandering around doing quoll-like activities. <laughs> Crazy. Pretty cool. Let's keep going. So the first part of this mission is to find some ground that people haven't been to in years, preferably. And I'm on the right track. I'm walking through some pretty crazy environment. It's going from grass plains to thick forest. And this is exactly where I want to be setting up these camera traps. So yeah, that's when I met Rob. And we agreed that in a few months time, after it warms up a little bit, we go on another expedition and that's what this is right now. Pretty crazy to be out here. And this campsite that we're going to tonight is still in a real remote section of Tassie. Found a pretty insane campsite for tonight. Started raining, so we're just gonna set up here. Still really good habitat for lots of animals that are in this area. Freshwater Creek running out into the ocean. Really thick scrub. But yeah, it's so crazy. Literally look at what we're camping in right now. Right, so the sun's come back out. This is set up for tonight. Pretty amazing, hey? We've got this little lagoon down in the front there. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the mask and snorkel on, go out and try catch some crayfish for dinner. This is crazy. Take a look at this.
We got cray, boys! Levi's just caught us a huge crayfish for dinner. Take a look at this thing. Woo! Yeah! He's a monster! Surely there's more. How's this? There has to be more. I, got, I gotta go get one. Levi's just snorkeling out in this little lagoon right here and he's caught us dinner. Big male crayfish, that's so cool. I'm gonna grab my snorkeling gear, head back out there. So this one was sitting in a pretty nice little hole. Yeah, he had a nice big uh, crack in the rock. So. I only just got in, he could have ducked back pretty quick, but I was yeah. lucky enough to get him. That is so crazy. Look at that animal. One of my favorite critters, those things. Turn it over. I feel bad eating them, but they just taste so good. Yeah. So sustainable though, eh? Yeah. And I know that we're gonna eat him for dinner, but we've actually run out of food, so it's gonna be good to cook this fella up. And it's sustainable, living off the land, catching your own food out here. But what an awesome species, hey? That's a big male crayfish. All right, I'm gonna get the mask and snorkel on. Go see if I can get one myself. chunk of flesh to eat for dinner. A bit cold, Miller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eskimo man. Yeah. Mm. Pretty good. So sweet. Yeah, sweet in the legs. You want some cup? Is this crackling? Can be if you want it to be, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm barefoot right now on these indigenous middens where thousands of years ago they used to be sitting up here literally where we were eating that crayfish before and feeding on shellfish and crayfish and stuff. These shells down here could be thousands of years old and it's crazy they were living like that with completely different beliefs so different to how our lives are 200 years ago. All right, we're gonna go set up the trail cameras and see if we can get a thylacine last night of the trip. Take a look at that. Wow. Just like that. So the cool thing about this is this will be the third time that we've set them up and it's pretty much in three different locations as well. So that's on right there. I've just set it up in front of this little trail right here. But now we've set it up in three different locations. The button grass plains on the first night, the sandy beach yesterday. Now that place proved to be the best so far. And now we've got it in a sort of similar location, but it's a bit more bushy around this area. So that'll be really good to know if I ever want to come back here, what area to focus on. All right, we'll leave that one here and we'll go set up the second one.
Okay, so I have now spent two months of my life down here in Tasmania searching for the Tasmanian tiger. And it's not that I thought it was going to be easy. I know that if there are any left out there, it would be an extremely small population, maybe even a functionally extinct population. But I just wanted to say all the time that I've spent here in Tasmania has been so worth it. The animals, land, people and experiences that I've encountered and had in this magic part of Tassie has been so amazing and I'm so keen to come back here. Now, believe it or not, after putting these videos out there online, I've received hundreds of messages from people who have supposedly seen these thylacines out there in the wild, which is really interesting. Some stories I've been told to keep quiet about. I've come to the conclusion that putting it on the internet would not be the best thing for this species survival in the long run. Tassie's a pretty wild place and some things are just best kept secret. So I've been filming videos about wildlife for the past 12 years all across the world, funding all my own adventures. But I would love to take what I'm doing right now to the next level. I'd love to go film anacondas over in South America gorillas in Africa, polar bears over in Canada. So I'm gonna start up a Patreon account. So if you wanna support me in these adventures, you can go over there. Now I'll be posting heaps of behind the scenes clips over there. And because I'm so grateful of all the support that you've given me over the years, I would love to give back to you guys as well. So if you sign up and become a member to my Patreon, I've got so many giveaways that I'm gonna be doing. GoPros, kayaks, maybe pack rafts. And eventually down the line, the goal is to do a giveaway trip, whether that's to Komodo Island to see Komodo dragons or Borneo to film the orangutans and king cobras. I would love to fly one of you guys out who are a member over on my Patreon to actually come on one of these trips with me and film it. You know, I feel like now's a time where everyone needs to be as connected to nature as possible and see what's happening out there in the world. You know, with the deforestation with the orangutans tangs, rhinos going extinct. You know, all of these animals that are out there, I would love to raise awareness for them. And that's what signing up to this Patreon account would help me do. But yeah, you know that I appreciate your support regardless over the years. I've been posting videos since I was 12 and to all of you legends who have been along there with me throughout this whole adventure, I appreciate you all so much. But yeah, it's pretty much like getting an entry to a giveaway at the end of every month because we got a lot of cool stuff that we're going to be giving away. But yeah, I'll link the Patreon in the description if you want to go check it out. Let's get back to this adventure. All right, well there we go. Four days ago we got dropped off right here and we've pretty much finished the expedition now. In about half an hour, we're gonna get picked up. But that was honestly crazy. Probably one of the most wild expeditions I've ever been on, looking for thylacines out in this remote location. You know, talking to people that live here, hearing the stories of people who have seen these animals, really makes you wonder if they are still out there. Whether they're here in Tasmania, up in Cape York, or even in Papua New Guinea. But yeah, just to go on an expedition like this with my mates, so cool and I'm so grateful to be able to do this. Yeah, if you wanna see more of these adventures, like, comment, subscribe. Go check out Rob Parsons and Tassie Boys Prospecting on YouTube for their sides of this story. They got a heap more footage than me, a heap of cool episodes over on their channel, so. Yeah, how cool is that?